Hello, my name is Takshima Maheshwari and the topic of my presentation is Section 7 of Arbitration and Conciliation Act of 1966. So before moving forward, we should understand that what exactly is an arbitration agreement? According to Section 7, Clause 1 of Arbitration and Conciliation Act, an arbitration agreement is an agreement that is entered into the parties to get their disputes resolved through arbitration. The agreement can be entered even at the time when the parties enter into the contract for resolution of further disputes by the process of arbitration. Now, arbitration agreement is a kind of agreement and it must be concluded under the provisions of Indian Contract Act. One of the most important aspects of this agreement is consensus ad idem. The parties must have the intention and will to take the dispute for resolution to arbitration and both the parties must be on the same page. Now, moving further, we should understand that what are the ingredients of arbitration agreement. So the very first point is the parties must have the mutual consent. The mutual consent in any agreement is the most important aspect. If both the parties do not give their consent, then the particular agreement will become invalid. Secondly, both the parties must have the clear intention to settle the dispute by a private tribunal. So the intention is as important as a mutual consent between the parties. Thirdly, the parties must agree to refer to the arbitration for resolution of disputes in writing. The writing part is the most important aspect because the agreement in the arbitration aspect, the parties must have agreed to it and it should be in written. Fourthly, the most important aspect and ingredient, as I have already mentioned earlier, is the consensus ad idem, which means agreeing to the same thing in the same sense by the parties. If one party agrees to another thing, keeping something else in their mind, then this will not be considered as a valid agreement. Therefore, both the parties must agree to the same thing in the same sense. Now, when we talk about the mode of execution of arbitration agreement, this has been mentioned under Section 7, Clause 4 of the particular Act. Firstly, a document must be signed by the parties. So the documents must be signed by the parties for the authentication of the document. Secondly, an exchange of letters, telex, telegrams, or any other means of telecommunication which provide a record for agreement. The record for agreement can be with any particular means. Thirdly, an exchange of statements of claim and defense in which the existence of the agreement is alleged by one party and not denied by the other party. Therefore, as I mentioned earlier, both the parties must be on the same page and should give, give the consent together. And they should also have the clear intention to come in the contract. Second, uh, now, when we talk about the case laws, the first case is Visa International Limited versus Continental Resources Limited. In this particular case, the Honorable Supreme Court observed that in the circumstances where the parties mutually consent to resolve the dispute through arbitration and conciliation, the most important aspect which is required is the intention of the parties and the evidence that both the parties have come to this particular intention and consent that they want to solve their dispute through the arbitration process. Now, in another case of Aspire Investments Private Limited versus MS Nexigan Eddy Solutions Private Limited, the Honorable Delhi High Court has elucidated that a valid arbitration agreement is the one where parties agree to submit their disputes to arbitration whether arising out of a contract or otherwise. And this agreement is reflected in writing. So as I mentioned earlier in the ingredients that the agreement should be intentional and the consent should be freely given by both the parties and this particular agreement should also be in writing. So this was said by the Honorable Delhi High Court in this particular case. Now, moving forward, there was an amendment in this particular act in 2015. Due to the growing technological enhancements and in its adoption in different sectors, the amendment of 2015 provides for the parties to conclude their agreement through the electronic means of communication. And this electronic means of communication will be considered as a valid agreement. So some of the examples of this electronic means of communication is, tele is telegram, email, etc. 
Now, this amendment has made the conclusion of the agreement more convenient as the parties are now not required to be physically present for the agreement. And the conclusion of this agreement through electronic means will be given same a same importance as a written agreement. Next, uh, the case law for after amendment was named the Vidya Darulia versus Durga Trading Corporation, which was dated on 14 December 2020. In this particular case, the Honorable Supreme Court explained the clause 4 of section 7, which has been amended in 2015. By this clause, as, I, as it has been written in the presentation, the, uh, the term arbitration agreement in writing would include any agreement by exchange of letters, telegrams, electronic mails or communications, which provides a record for agreement or exchange of statements of claim and defense in which one party claims the existence of the agreement and the other party doesn't deny it. So basically, the electronic means of communication will be given the same importance as, as the written agreement. And this has become more easier for the people to connect with due to the online means. Thank you. I hope you like my presentation.